Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I'm going to explain the difference between summing stacks, VCAs, and groups in Logic Pro as quickly and concisely as I possibly can. However, if you're looking for a longer format tutorial where I really dive deep into this topic, I do have a video I made a few years back that is still relevant on this, and I'll link to that below if you want to check it out. But before I get into the tutorial, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Boombox.io is a brand new audio audio file collaboration tool that's perfect for musicians, bands, producers, mixing engineers, really anyone who needs to work on music or audio projects in a collaborative way. Boombox.io allows you to upload your tracks and receive time-stamped feedback from collaborators on your project, and all of this is handled securely on the Boombox website. Only collaborators you invite to your project can listen to your tracks and leave feedback. If you're ready to give Dropbox the boot, head over to Boombox Box.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Summing stacks, VCAs, and groups all give you somewhat similar control over the volume of multiple tracks all at the same time with some distinct differences between them. So for example, let's say I wanted to take all of my drum tracks and effects tracks here, and I wanted to sum these together and apply bus processing to them. So I want volume control over all of these at the same time, and maybe I want to add effects to all of the drums. In this case, a summing stack is generally gonna be your best choice. So to create a summing stack, you just go up to track, create track stack, choose a summing stack, and there you go. So here's the summing stack itself. You can click here to sort of collapse all of those tracks into the summing stack as a folder. So it's both a summing bus and sort of an organizational folder element. Now, the main key difference between a summing stack and VCAs and groups is that if you look at all of these tracks here, the output of all of these tracks has been changed to bus one, and then the input of the summing stack is bus one. So the signal from all of these drum tracks are being routed into and combined together in the summing stack. So I can control the volume of all of the instruments inside of the summing stack just by using the main fader on the track stack. And the great thing about this is with a summing stack, you can still have quick and easy control over the relative balance of each of the instruments inside of the stack. And the last thing is I can apply bus processing. So if I want, say, an EQ on all of the drums, I can simply add an EQ to the summing stack, and it'll affect all of the instruments that are in the summing stack. And of course, you can solo and mute the summing stack, and it'll solo or mute all of the tracks that are inside of the summing stack. So again, these are the key takeaways of summing stacks. They give you folder organization. They allow you to control the group volume of all of the tracks in the stack. They serve as a summing bus, and you can apply bus processing with effects directly on the summing stack. Okay, next, let's talk about VCAs and how these differ from summing stacks. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. This is a term that comes from analog mixing consoles, and VCAs can be used as a control source to group the volume of multiple tracks together without having to select all of them like I've done here. So to create a VCA, you first need to show the VCA slot in the mixer. It's not shown by default. So to do this, you can go up to View, Channel Strip Components, and then just make sure that VCA is shown and you'll see this additional VCA slot here on each channel. Then what you can do is select all of the channels you want in the VCA, click here, and you can create a new VCA for selected channel strips. What this does is it creates a VCA channel over here on the far right of the mixer, and you can see that all of these are going to VCA1. What the VCA does is it gives me a volume control for all of those channels in the mix. So this channel is going to control the volume of all of the drums and the effects. And once again, I have mute and solo control in addition to the volume control. The key difference here is that 
VCAs do not actually pass signal through them. If you look at all of the tracks that are in the VCA group, you'll see that the outputs are still going to the stereo output. They're still going to here. So at no point in the signal chain are these tracks being summed together before they reach the stereo output. So the VCA serves as just a volume control source for the other tracks. You can't place any plugins on it. There's no effects allowed. There's no summing involved. And by the way, it's just a side note here. The master fader in Logic that's there by default is a VCA on its own. It's actually a VCA to control the stereo output. Now, another thing worth mentioning is if you want that sort of folder organizational element of a track stack with the volume control of a VCA, what you can do is you can create a folder stack instead of a summing stack. And now I have the organizational element of this being in a folder, but all of these have now been assigned to the VCA that's associated with the track stack. So folder stacks are really just a folder with a VCA, whereas summing stacks are a folder with a summing bus. Lastly, we have groups, which can be used to group together multiple track parameters all at once, including volume. So to create a group, you simply select the tracks that you want to add a group to. You go to the group option here, the group slot. You click on that, and then you can select an available group. I'll select group one. And now you can see all of these tracks are in group one. Now, like VCAs, groups do not have a summing component, but like I said, you can control other parameters outside of volume with a group. So if you go over to the inspector here, once you've created a group, there will be a group parameters uh, inspector here. You can click settings, you can open this up, you can name the group. So if I call this drums and effects, you'll see drums and effects shows up out here. If I make these channels a bit wider, if I select volume, for example, this means that the volume of all these tracks is grouped together. So if I adjust one of the tracks, it adjusts the volume of all of them. If I set the pan as a group parameter, now if I adjust the pan of one, it adjusts all of them. If I turn that option off, now I can individually adjust pan. Or if I you know, choose mute, now I can mute all of these at the same time. These days, I almost never use groups for group volume control because you can just use a summing stack or a VCA for that. And arguably, I would say a summing stack or a VCA is better for group volume control because if you're adjusting volume with a group, you can't individually adjust each of the channels without disabling the group. Now, you can quickly disable the group. You just press Shift G. That'll disable all groups. You can make your volume adjustment and then hit shift G again to put it back in the group. But that, you know, again, arguably takes more time than just putting this in a summing stack or a VCA. The upside to using a group is that, again, you have these other parameters that can be grouped. Maybe I want editing to be a grouped parameter. Editing in particular is really helpful because this means you can drag over one of the tracks in the group and it'll select all of them. So if I make a marquee selection or something on one of these, it'll actually select all of them. If I use the scissors tool on one of these tracks in the group, it'll apply that to all of them. So group editing is really helpful if you want to edit multi-track recordings all at the same time, like multi-track drums or multi-channel guitar recordings or amp recordings. Editing is really where groups shine, not necessarily mixing and volume control. One thing you can do with a group, though, that you can't do with a VCA is you can put VCAs inside of groups. So it's conceivable that you could have maybe three or four different VCAs, and then you could put these VCAs inside of a group with volume being one of the group parameters, and you could control the volume of multiple VCAs at the same time. So that's the difference between summing stacks, VCAs, and groups. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.